the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to you this morning and a very happy New Year to you and a happy eighth day of Christmas. And also we recall today the naming and circumcision of Jesus, so lots of things to celebrate. And if you were up late seeing the new year in, or up with nervous pets, then well done for getting here. <coughs> Almighty God, to whom all, all hearts, hearts are open, all, all desires known, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may radically love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. Almighty God, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we, we have, have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, for our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Father Almighty. 
blessed Son was circumcised in obedience to the law for our sake, and given the name that is above every name. Give us grace faithfully to bear his name, to worship him in the freedom of the Spirit, and to proclaim him as the Saviour of the world, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
letter of Paul to the Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also a heir to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and thank you indeed for all your good messages while I was away. But it's interesting, isn't it, that for all of the long build-up to Christmas, the church doesn't hang around the manger adoring this new-born babe for very long, before it is then ready to move on. Now, the Gospels don't tell us too much about Jesus' childhood. So when they do give us something, you know it has to be something that is significant. 
As we know, New Year's Day is always eight days after Christmas, and St. Luke tells us that when he was eight days old, Jesus was given his name and was circumcised. And the fact that New Year's Day, of course, falls on a Sunday this year, then it gives us this perfect opportunity to contemplate the circumcision and indeed the naming of our Lord Jesus. But who wants to think about circumcision at this time of the morning? And yet it is a ceremony, of course, making all baby boys members of the Jewish community on that eighth day, and it was practiced certainly on Jesus, as Luke tells us in that Gospel. And it was very important to Jesus that he was a member of God's special people, that he fully shared in the life and worship of those people within that Jewish community, living and growing and learning as one of us within that community. But I want to concentrate more today on the other part of that story, the part that is the second bit of our service today, which is, of course, the naming of Jesus. And our names are very important to us. They give us our personal identity. And not to know somebody's name means that, well, how well do we actually know them in any meaningful way? After all, the name of a person often brings them into a relationship with us. <coughs> and if people get our names wrong, then we feel perhaps they don't know us as well as they ought to. I had a very nice email from somebody in the senior staff team uh, of the diocese when they found out I had COVID, wishing me, saying they were very sorry, uh, wishing me well and telling me that they were going to pray for me and if I needed any help then to shout out to them. Unfortunately the email started with Dear Stephen as opposed to Dear David which certainly didn't endear it to me. I could certainly forgive it if it was a one-off because we can all perhaps do those things wrong but it is something that has happened before uh, and, and, and Names matter. Names matter to us. But in going back to our celebration today, as soon as the child Jesus had been circumcised, it is the duty of one of those who are present to give them their name for the very first time. The parents, of course, will have discussed and chosen that name but in some <coughs> Jewish practice, they do not use it for that first week. And it is only in the context of this child's dedication to God, and as prayers are said for the blessing of his life, that his name is first used. It shows how important that God, who knows his name first, as Isaiah said, I have called you by name, you are mine. But Jewish tradition also adds another thought that the name is prophetic of that child's life. The name will point to the kind of person they will be. And how true that is, of course, in Jesus' case. They named him Jesus, the name given by the angel at his conception, but what a name it is. Jesus or Joshua, meaning God saves. God saves. It was a common enough name, certainly at the time, but how prophetic of the Cool meaning and purpose of his life. And his words 
and his actions will show forth God's saving love for the whole of humanity. And in his life and in that sacrificial death, he will bring to fruition the Father's plan to save all of his people. Little wonder that we ought to sing at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And no wonder too that his name is in our hearts and in our minds and in our voices too in prayer and praise. And will possibly be on our lips as we take that final step into death and new life too. For it is in his name that we have discovered our salvation, our hope for ourselves and for this world in which we live. But this naming of Jesus, of course, has vast implications for our daily lives. For as our reading today from the letter to the Galatians reminded us, it is through Jesus that we have been adopted as God's children. And so are sisters and brothers in some way to Jesus too. And we in our baptism and through that constant renewal of our faith day <coughs> by day are proud to share his name because we are the Jesus people. But how do we keep and make the name of Jesus holy? Well, certainly not just by avoiding using it as a swear word, although that would be a good start, certainly, but by letting it be prophetic of the sort of people we are as individuals and as a church. Everything we say or do should be in the name of Jesus, living by his standards, working in his way, loving like he loves, caring to the nth degree as he does. We shall be the Jesus people when we are known as those who live out his call to love, caring for each other and the stranger and the foreigner, and demonstrating his care for this planet on which our fragile life is lived. And if we commit to anything, and have a New Year's resolution, then as a church, perhaps, we ought to make that one of the main priorities to play our part in the 12 months that are ahead of us. But how do you face 2023? Many of us, I'm sure, after the turbulence of the last year, regard a New Year with apprehension. And it may not just be in the national or international spheres that we face the future with some anxiety. We may be facing upheavals in our own personal lives, in our own family circumstances, or perhaps the financial pressures, or with our own health issues too. And none of us know, do we not, where we shall be by December the 31st of this year. Who'd have thought there would be a, have been a war in Europe again 12 months ago, as we might have gathered? Who'd have thought we'd have had three Prime Ministers in that time too? But surely there can be no better way than to enter this new year than with the name of Jesus on our lips and in our hearts. And in a world where the certainties that we might have held have been broken up, what better name do we have to cling to than the person of Jesus, our rock and our redeemer? 
In a world where we appear to be making ourselves more isolated and building walls once again around us and around our nations, what better name do we have than the name of Jesus, who as the letter to the Ephesians says, breaks down the dividing wall of hostility and made all one in his life and death and resurrection. And finally, in a life that so often seems challenging and uncertain, what better name do we have than the name of Jesus to give us our hope, our joy and our peace, not only in 2023, but we pray for all of eternity too. Happy New Year to you all. Merry Christmas. It's good to be here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Because it not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. First, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. <coughs> On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in the company of all the faithful and looking for the coming of the kingdom, let us <laughs> offer our prayers to God, the source of all life and holiness. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in the believer's ear. It soothes his sorrows, heals his wounds, and drives away his fear. We give thanks for the name of Jesus as we pray for the worship and the witness of Christ's church in this winter. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. yeah, our prayer. It makes the wounded spirit whole and calms the troubled breast. It is manna to the hungry soul and to the very rest. We pray for God's faithful servants in our world and we continue our prayer for its healing. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Weak is the efforts of our hearts and cold our warmest thoughts. But when we see thee as thou art, we will praise thee as we ought. We pray at the beginning 
this new year for new discipleship and consecration to the way of our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. So then we will die forth and play with every place and breath, and may the music of thy name refresh our souls in death. We continue our prayer at this time for the sick. Isabel Scape, Isabel Pacheco, Sheila, Christopher, Alan, Jean, Ben, Emily, Kenny, Christopher, Anne, Wendy, Florence, Janet, Sue, and Monica. We also pray for the prayers of the soul of the recently departed. Gerald Fertetti, and whose anniversaries of their death fall at this time, Vera Lawton and Laura Patterson. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. And we pause, we pray for the repose of Pope Benedict the 16th soul, and in the words of the late Pope Emeritus Benedict in his April visit to the UK, may the risen Lord strengthen our efforts to mend the virtues of the past and to meet the challenges of the present with hope in the future which, in his providence, he holds out to us and to our world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
our poverty. By your Spirit, may we share <coughs> in your riches. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours, always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray to you that on the eighth day he was circumcised in obedience to the law of Moses, that he might fulfil the law and reveal to us your grace and truth. For here is foreshadowed his perfect self-offering <coughs> upon the cross, the shedding of his blood to set us free from sin and death. In baptism we die with him and are raised in him, that we might walk in newness of life and proclaim the wonders of his saving name. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices <coughs> to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Of 
of the Holy Spirit, O God <coughs> and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
whose incarnate Son was given the name of Saviour, grant that we who have shared in this sacrament of our salvation may live out our years in the power of the name above all other names. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank, thank you for Jesus. feeding us with, with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. <coughs> To say if you are able to uh, have a coffee, tea, or coffee, and a little biscuits, whatever else there may be, maybe a mince pie if you haven't had enough of them already, to stay and, uh, and, and just catch up with each other, as they say. Uh, we are needing help, though, volunteers, certainly people who have volunteered to help with the teas and coffees, that list has run out. So, again, if you were one of those and you want to do that again, please have a word with Janet after the service and we can get something sorted because there's nobody on the list other than Janet at the moment. So if you could help in that way, that would be good. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who decorated this church uh, to prepare it for Christmas time. I normally say that at the Christmas service, but as always, of course, they do a wonderful job. They do a wonderful job at the church. That's quite beautiful, I have to say. A, a huge thank you to all who contributed to that. And I want to say a huge thank you to my retired clergy colleagues who stepped in at the last minute to cover all of these services over Christmas. Thank you to each and every one of them for playing their part as they did too. And for our church wardens and others who shouldered extra responsibility with me not being able to be here. So thank you to them indeed. And the final one I've got is I draw your attention to this coming Friday when we shall be celebrating the Feast of the Epiphany, which is a major feast in the church's year, of course. So again, we have a service here at 7 o'clock. Our choir will be back for that too. Um, so please come and support that if you are able to do so. That's the core of the Eucharist this Friday at 7 o'clock at night. If you're wanting a lift or needing a lift because it's obviously at an evening time, then have a word with me and we can see if we can try to arrange something to ensure that you don't miss out and are able to celebrate that. And then next week it will be the Baptism of Christ where we shall again have a feast to celebrate on this uh, as the year progresses. Many thanks.
love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.